Hey, what's up guys, Impulse7 here, and today I am bringing you guys another video, and in this video, I'm going to be reacting to the new FNAF game theory, FNAF Help Me Solve the Impossible. Now, I'm gonna be releasing this tomorrow, because, um, well, I don't really have time to get to it today, but, uh, I'm actually recording this 40 minutes before I stream, so... I don't know if I even have time because it's 24 minutes long. Also, I, just, I should say if I sound a little weird, it's because I'm sick. I don't know if I sound different. It's kind of hard to tell. But I am sick right now. So uh, hopefully my voice doesn't bother you. And if it does, I apologize. But we're going to watch the new game theory. So, so let's just get started. Uh, okay, I'll leave you to it. See you on the flip side. So I will catch you on the flip side. Hopefully. Okay. I called it. I totally called it. Eight years ago, I told you that the purple guy was the phone guy, <laughs> and now here we are. William Afton, our yep. killer, is on a phone saying, see on the flip side, just like phone guy did all those years ago. Finally, yep. That's definitely a reference to the theory. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show where every victory is bittersweet. You see, while I should be super happy that I just had one of my oldest FNAF theories confirmed, instead I'm feeling haunted by the unsolved <laughs> Not mystery really. of the past. Let me explain. At this point in the series, I feel like we have a really solid understanding of the story. We know the broad strokes, we know the general timeline, and the few big lingering questions that we've struggled with are starting to come into focus. Where's the placement of sister location? Well, the most recent games and books have hinted at its connection to the Fredbear era. What's the origins of Fazbear? It's after well, FNAF 1. seem to be giving us more and more hints pointing at the early days of William and Henry's working relationship. What was the deal with FNAF 4? Literally, the final tale of the Pizzaplex all but spells it out for us. All yep. those are probably theories best saved Pretty for much. a later date, but today I wanted to focus on something else. The clues that we've all completely missed. The times when this franchise has explicitly... <gasps> what I'm wondering is, is this going to be another one of those, um... Those videos where it's like one clue that he that he needs everybody to help him solve, like the uh, like the survival logbook, and also what was it the the ARG, which <laughs> which clearly didn't go well, but. I, I, I don't know if it's going to be kind of like that, but... ...tried to tell us something, and we've utterly failed to pick up on what it's been laying down. And let me be clear, I'm not talking about me overanalyzing some minor detail of the game world. They I'm talking about very the word. clear puzzles that were very <clears throat> obviously set up by the game makers for us to solve that we've been unable to do anything with. And the reason I'm calling it out now is because they're starting to add up. In my estimation, there have been no less than four of these sorts of major puzzle moments. At least three of them are connected, and it's been going on for the better part of six years. So now that we're all done fangirling over Doug's apps, I finally got my appetizers. Thanks, Matt Pat. Before Help wanted two drops and adds a whole new layer of mysteries to solve, I wanted to take a minute to stop and see if now, finally, we were able to solve these mysteries once and for all. The pieces are in place for us. The question is, are we able to put them together? The first one of these we is also see. the most recent, so it should come as no surprise to see me bringing it up here. The tally marks codes that we found hidden throughout FNAF Room. Oh yeah, those of you I forgot no that existed. About, in the newest game, right before you reach Bonnie Bowl, there's a corridor with a number of real doors. I remember well looking at that. Off AR doors. If you walk through one of the real life doors, you'll find a room full of baby plushies. This is already a bit weird because the game makes it a point to call out the fact that baby should not be here. Specifically with the AR plush baby toy where the description reads, quote, what's she doing here? The answer, we suspect, is that the Pizzaplex, Sister Location, the FNAF 6 Location, and the FNAF 4 House are all practically built on top of I each agree. other. Or at I agree. Or at very least that. exist as one connected series of buildings. We go into the basement of the Pizzaplex, only to find the FNAF 6 location. In a secret ending of Ruin, we see a version of Sister Location Scooper deactivating... I mean, I don't think that's the, the same the one, but... Tales of the Pizzaplex stories but I do think that the Sister the Location location is, is down there. Circus Baby's entertainment and rentals. So that we already... Whoops, that we already kind of knew. The baby plushies are here because they all share a connected history. A history that is gradually being excavated layer by layer underneath the Pizzaplex. Anyway, in this room, the dolls laugh at you, and then, when you turn around, they disappear. Nothing all that surprising. But what is surprising is what remains in the left-hand corner right where the plushies sat. You'll find a chair turned to face... Yes, I remember when I was playing, or when I was replaying Ruin, like, in a voice call with my friends. I remember looking at those. At least I think I looked at those. And I didn't really know what they meant. But I kind of, 
glossed over them and I haven't really looked into them. I do wonder if they have some sort of connection to the tally marks in the survival logbook, which I don't think were ever solved. I could be wrong, but I don't think they ever were. So I wonder if they could have some sort of connection to that. It's the corner and a sequence of tally marks carved into the <coughs> wall. And these aren't just random markings either. They're specifically in groups of twos, fours, and fives. And they're grouped in such a way to suggest words, or at the very least, separate letters. Now, that alone would be weird, but an even bigger, clearer display of tally marks appears again about an hour later into the game. After completing Bonnie Bowl, you enter Bonnie's green room behind the bowling alley. Not only does this area show us the, um, special relationship that existed between <laughs> Freddy and Bonnie, if you put on the Banny mask, on the wall over top of the pin-loading staff bot is another code, much larger I actually didn't know about that one. than the one that we just saw before. And once again, all the tally marks here are specifically grouped into twos, fours, and fives. No ones or threes in sight. They are obviously meant to be connected. They are obviously trying to tell us something, but we are obviously not getting the message. So what can we do? Well, the first answer is to try a substitution cipher. I, I wonder if it's going to be sort of like the wall code where they where there is a meaning that we have to figure out somehow, but it's hard to. <laughs> obviously i think the wall code had some sort of hints in freddy and friends or something like that i have no idea how it was solved i think it was something like that but um but i don't know if there's anything in this in ruin or anything like that that we can use for this i wonder if it could be a sort of same thing or if it's like just somehow means nothing i don't know i feel like it would be weird if it meant nothing but it could tally up the numbers and swap in the appropriate letters. Notice though that the tally marks are weirdly spaced out, which led a bunch of us to believe that we're supposed to be using those spaces to define each letter, adding up the numbers that aren't separated by the space. So the top line there is going to be 4, then a space, then 544, four, which would add up to 13. It's a pretty darn self-explanatory system here. Doing that for the whole right. thing gives us a code of... 4, 13, 6, 19, 4, 17, 7, 4, 16, 10, 8, 7, 27, 19. Which, if you do a standard number to letter conversion, gives you this. D, M, F, S, D, Q, G, yeah. You know what, I'm just gonna leave it there. Clearly, this isn't working. It's just a bunch of random letters. You'll also notice that there's a 27 in that number mix, which should have been our first red flag, considering that, you know, there's only 26 letters in the yeah. English <laughs> alphabet. But Reddit user T Girl Lunara wasn't deterred. Because the alphabet doesn't have 27 letters, they instead took it a step further and tried the whole thing as a shift cipher. A shift cipher is similar to a Caesar cipher, but instead of the numbers converting into standard letters like A1, B2, C3, etc., you instead mix up or shift the order in some way. So now, for instance, A is 7, B is 8, C is 9, and so on. Normally in a Caesar cipher, the alphabet then loops back around, so if A was 7, Z would then equal 6, but in a shift cipher, that doesn't happen. The numbers just carry on as is. So in this case, if A equals 7, then Z would equal 32. For this particular instance, T girl okay. Lunara put A Excuse equaling me. 4, which meant that 27 was now X, and gave us the entire code of Adjka pan damaged XP. Not a lot of lore significance with that one. But damaged. I did want to continue down that path. So we tried hundreds Was that just coincidentally worked? Cyphers. Did that just coincidentally work? Absolute gibberish. We also tried yeah, just okay. unscrambling the words. Maybe there was another arrangement in there that would give us a more cohesive answer, but yet again, more gibberish. Another solution was presented presented by user smart fella fart smella great name there we also tried <coughs> adding up the numbers but this time they didn't do it by adding up the numbers in each group but instead the numbers in each column again notice the odd spacing of all these tally marks it can't be a coincidence right the first column contains a four and a five so that would be nine the second is just the two next up is five so on and so forth down the line ending up with this code <gasps> 92591371081621414718254 This felt promising to me because unlike last time we only had numbers that fell within the alphabet so converting all of these numbers into letters we got ourselves the following I B M G J U P T K N bed. We once again went through with all the classic Caesar ciphers and word unscramblers and all that stuff, but once again, wound up with nothing. Back to the drawing board for the third time. An anonymous poster uploaded this onto Imager, and the same point was later brought to my attention by Reddit user NoRate. Basically, what they pointed out was that the tally marks in the corner of Baby's room make a 5x5 grid. A grid that, when rotated or flipped, can map perfectly onto the tally code that we see on the wall of Bonnie Bowl. NoRate actually took this information and pointed out the fact that the main grid arrangement seems to line up with something known as a Polybius cipher, which uses a 5x5 five five grid of letters to scramble or unscramble codes. Basically, a number code like 53 would mean that you go along the top to 5, and then down 3, and boom, that right there is the letter for your phrase. And while it's yes, I, I've, I've done us, I think I've, like, <laughs> uh, I, I know that that exists. 
I think in like the flash or something they use like a similar code to that in like season two um and like i did this sort of thing in like i don't know grade five six something like that where i would make a sort of grid like that and i would just like tap with my friends just random gibberish so i'm i know that exists first sadly the method also came up short with only twos fours and fives as the tally marks the grid wasn't really giving us any information that we could use to decode anything we needed an entire alphabet in here not just a few random tally marks the same held true for another famous five by five grid cipher the playfair cipher which i wonder if it's possible that you could like shift those numbers by the one by the tallies in the logbook i don't know if that would do anything and i don't know if there's enough of them in the logbook to actually work with that but i wonder if that could be a sort of thing that you can do i don't know word to use. what could that code word be who knows did it feel like we were actually starting to make some level of progress here yes absolutely but did any of it yield us any results no but here's where things get really interesting this isn't the first time fnaf has stumped us with tally marks yes the logbook six years my friends to the release of the freddy fazbear security logbook home to my two oldest <coughs> greatest nemeses the foxy grid and the dabbing chica <laughs> For those of you who haven't been a part of the community for that long, let me quickly... I haven't, but I do know about that. Innocent children's workbook was pivotal for Dakota Obviously. Four, for giving us the name of Cassidy. For frustrating us to no end with seemingly unsolvable number puzzles. The most notorious of them all was the Foxy Grid. A numeric grid with a hidden alphabet written into its squares. A grid that we still haven't figured out the use of to this very day. You ever read Moby Dick? At least are you familiar with the story about... No. Nahab's obsessed with killing this giant white whale. This right here, this Foxy Grid that is my white whale this thing haunts my nightmares this grid keeps me up at night which honestly are two very contradictory effects of this one grid on my sleep habits but that is how infuriating this thing is i am convinced that this grid will eventually give us the name of the crying child i just don't know how yet anyway one of the other clues that never really got a proper use out of this thing were a series of i i already know that people are going to comment on this video being like oh my god it already did evan <laughs> I doubt it. I don't know how yet. Anyway, one of the other clues that never really got a proper use or just out of this thing from were a series of tally marks that were found throughout the book. The fact that they're in red pen tells us that they were written by Mike. Other than that, we don't really know anything mm -hmm. about what they were trying to say to us. And so they've lingered on in the back of my brain for over half a decade. Why am I bringing them up now? Well, I, I've never had a really any idea. These two sets of tally marks. You know, besides them just being tally marks. Guess what I found? Groups of fours and fives only. Yep. Yet again, we find ourselves with a collection of tally marks carrying over the same specific sets of numbers Are except the two but this just a yeah. random coincidence not really sure but the fact that tally marks keep getting brought up and also keep stumping us that's just a wee bit infuriating and yet the games still aren't done with this puzzle you see the tally marks are connected to yet another part of the franchise security breach back during my playthrough of the How? original security breach this room in the daycare section really caught my attention i'm noticing that two four and five are different which is weird as someone who has dealt with a lot of codes and args and things that feels suspicious i agree two four and five two years before five. okay that's actually pretty interesting that it does tie in together i will say though um sorry if i'm not talking as much in this one as i usually do uh i'm just like i don't have that much to add to a conspiracy that i have not delved into but i have had an idea about that that it's about the missing kids like the order that, that they were killed in so in pizza party and fnaf vr uh we play as gabriel the kid who possesses freddy and when we look around we can see that bonnie and chica have party hats like right on them and foxy does not he has some near him but they're not like really close enough to him or on him and i think there's like a few of them so they're not like definitively for him but the ones for bonnie and chica they're right there for him um and we play as freddy meaning that we are third because chica is first and bonnie is second meaning that gabriel what's that sound? gabriel is the third kid killed in the missing kid uh, the missing children incident uh and susie we already know was first because of ultimate custom night so that tells us that bonnie was second uh so it places the the purplish one here on two because bonnie was killed second and Freddy, we already know from there, is third because Chica is one. That's why those ones aren't colored. Four is like a sort of bronze, bronzish red, which is like the color of Foxy, indicating that Foxy is the fourth kid, and then the fifth one is yellow, indicating Golden Freddy is the fifth kid. 
Um, so that's the whole idea that I've had about it, and I do think that's definitely the case. But it is interesting that it's 2, 4, and 5. Um, uh, so th that makes me wonder, would the tally marks have something to do with the missing kids? Uh, there are five missing kids, so it could be that it's like the tally marks reference like the victims of Afton or something like that. But I don't know exactly how that would work. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense because there's not like 27 of them, right? So, yeah, let's keep going. I'm going to rewind a little bit. Someone who has dealt with a lot of codes and ARGs and things, that feels suspicious. I agree. Two four and five two years before ruin some element some essence of this tally code was still kicking around but now the numbers were being matched with colors and so reddit user comfortable map 7594 took those tally marks and used these colors to create a sort of paint by numbers graphic which i absolutely adore as a possible solution though i absolutely hate the fact that it didn't seem to produce anything let me Damn. know down in the comments do you see anything that seems here? pretty because cool me, all i'm seeing here well, is i, I don't know depressed. so maybe we just take <laughs> a break from trying to decode these things and instead take a minute to look at the world around these tallies to get a sense of who might be speaking here. As I mentioned, in the security logbook, we know it's Mike, based on the red pen and the signature at the front of the book. But what about in Ruin? Well, in the baby plush room, we have, obviously enough, baby. Not that shocking. But what's especially important to note here is that they're not all baby. See, half the plushies are normal baby, and the, the other ones are scrap, scrap baby. baby. Yeah. What's the big difference? Well, besides the obvious scrap metal plates on their bodies, there's one thing that alternates depending on the version. Something that's been important the baby since the very beginning her eye color the regular baby plushies have blue eyes while scrap baby has green eyes showing the two sides of baby before and after elizabeth's mm -hmm. death and possession but reddit user dylan hippie jink took it one step further they noticed that the eyes of the baby and scrap baby plushies were scratched out leaving just the blue right eye from baby and the green left eye for scrap baby that right there that is huh. a compelling detail because it directly matches up to the evil entity that we've been battling against throughout the entire game the mimic you see in the story Tiger Rock, the Mimic AI program takes the form of the digital okay. entity Tiger Rock, a tiger animatronic with a green left eye. What I'm noticing is that the tally marks in Ruin are near Circus Baby, the tally marks in the logbook are written by Mike, and the, the blue numbers connect to the missing children. And Mike, the missing children, and Circus Baby are all the characters that are in sister location, with Mike being the player, the missing children being in the fun times, and then later injected into him with the scooper, and Circus Baby, who is, uh, well, Circus Baby, she's Elizabeth. So, all the characters that are referenced by the tally marks connect all the way back to sister location, so I wonder if that actually means anything. And a blue right eye. Is this confirming for us that the Mimic AI and Baby are somehow one and the same? Or Doubt maybe it. that the Mimic has two souls, or entities that it learned from? Just like how Baby in the books is two children in one, Elizabeth like and Charlie. <laughs> Not really sure, but that right there, that is a massive revelation that feels super important to solving the mystery. Or at least it did, until I dug a bit more and found out that the scrap baby plushies also sometimes have their left eye missing it is still a very cool compelling connection that i'm not willing to fully discount yet it's just not as consistent as i would have liked as far as evidence that is an interesting Care connection to be fair like a disciplinary measure a bad child that was put into time out that's the uh, yeah it does look like that scratching away at the wall to count the Ooh, and it's in the circus baby room and afton in the books is like really negative towards elizabeth so I wonder if that's supposed to be referenced that, to that, where, like, Afton's, like, dis, like, showing discipline to Elizabeth or something like that? Or days out of boredom. Since this is a room full of ghostly baby plushies, it stands to reason that the punished child here could have been Elizabeth. Yeah. Obviously not physically here in this room of the pizza plex, but with this scene recreating a recurring moment from her past in some ghostly spectral way. We know Afton wasn't really the greatest dad to her. Maybe this right here? It's a glimpse of his parenting style. As yeah, for exactly. The tally That's what I just said. Nice. Green room, the font is the same, so they were likely carved by the same person. But honestly, that's where the similarities end. These marks appear in AR land, as opposed to babies, which are in the real world. This implies that whoever made Bonnie's marks either had the Banny mask at some point, or is connected to the digital network that's running the Pizza Plex. Bonnie's marks are also higher up on the wall, as opposed to babies, which are at floor level, easily reachable by a small child. So then, why these two rooms specifically? Well, a few things come to mind. If Baby is, in fact, connected in some way to the Mimic, hmm. and or the neural network that runs the Pizza Plex, we can guess that Bonnie is too. When we deactivate 
activate the wet floor bots around the Pizzaplex, we also end up deactivating Bonnie. So that yeah, he's connected the with them. The Pizzaplex interface may be important here. We also know that both Baby and Bonnie are quote unquote missing from the Pizzaplex. Baby isn't supposed to be here, according to that AR description, and Bonnie was decommissioned from the complex. Again, they're obviously loose threads, but in a puzzle with no clear answer that somehow connects two very random, historically unrelated characters like Bonnie and Baby, every small detail here is absolutely worth considering. But that's more than enough talk about tally marks. Let me remind you of yet another numerical code that was just blatantly given to us by the devs that us as a community have been largely unable to solve. Remember those Mylar balloons that I was just freaking out about in Superstar Daycare? Well, they have themselves yet another appearance right, right here <laughs> on the eighth hole of security breaches. I like how you circled 69. <laughs> on this I forgot hole, about those. Hole, we get this. 3192. That's suspicious. A handful of numbered balloons. In reality, the number sequence is actually a lot longer. <clears throat> 63695531923. The fact that these are in Monty Gator Golf immediately made me wonder whether this code was the score they had to get in the game, except there are 10 numbers and only 9 holes. But when has simple math ever stopped the internet? User 00 Core 00 tried a number of different combinations to see whether they could activate anything. Sadly, nothing. Then Ruin released with a new Monty Gator Golf arcade cabinet, and so people like Yusuf0808 tried again using this exact same. I actually tried that, up with nothing. but I wasn't Basically, able to do it. <laughs> these games have been data mined to heck and back. If this code was meant to unlock something inside of Monty Gator Golf, we'd have heard about it already. Probably, Which leads yeah. Me to believe that it's something actually outside of the game. Much like I suspected with the tally marks, it's not about activating some hidden ending, it's about giving us a code, a cipher, a phrase that'll tell us something about the wider world. We just haven't figured out how to use it yet. I've tried converting the letters, ciphers, you name it, I just keep coming up empty handed. One of our writers even suggested trying hex codes to see if there might be something there. At first, it looked positive. The last six numbers actually produce a purple that matches the Aftons that we know and love so much. But it's not an exact match, nor does the first half of the numbers amount to anything meaningful. Maybe the fact that these are Mylar balloons connected to the multicolored Mylar balloons in the daycare, which then also connects them back to the tally mark puzzle? Or maybe I'm just desperately <clears throat> looking for answers where there are no answers hmm. to be had. Now, for all of these lingering that problems, is interesting. I was able to find at least a couple of people discussing them online, in discords, forums, reddit posts, what have you. But for this last one, not Nothing, or at least practically nothing. I could find only two posts total, which is exactly why I wanted to raise some awareness about it here, because to me, this seems like a massive clue that largely got overlooked during the wave of reveals that happened throughout Ruin. Early on in the game, we have a chance to revisit the daycare attendance room. This room is nothing new to a FNAF theorist. It was the one that we were able to unlock in Security Breach by photographing random characters throughout the game world. Inside of it, we were able to find the glitchy Balloon World arcade cabinet, a lost relic to a seemingly incomplete path inside the game. So when the room showed up again in ruin, I wanted to pay extra attention. On the surface, the room yeah, it's it's messy, the and then messy when you put on the mask, it's neat. Stuff, clothing hanging from the wall, some post-it notes scattered around. But then by putting on the vanny mask, everything resets to normal. The room basically goes back to the way that it was, cleaner, more organized, mm -hmm. and all that noteworthy. Until of course you start talking about the notes. Those are worthy. All of a sudden, on a blank wall, we get ourselves a three by three grid of post-it notes. Groceries, what butter, butter, butter. butter. <laughs> post-it note lore. I mean, if I had a nickel for every time Steel Wool used post-it notes to hint at lore, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. The nine post-its yeah. that we're dealing with are as follows. One that says groceries, with butter written three times. There's a collection of dots, a scribble, footprints, hearts and pizza, lightning bolt, sun and hill, stars and a microphone, and a selection of candy. As usual, my first thought was to jump into a cipher. Immediately, you see how some of these post-its can relate to numbers. We have two feet, four stars, seven dots, three butters, three lightning bolts, Felt like a really solid place to start, but obviously it wasn't going to be perfect. We have a pizza post-it, but are we counting the two slices of pizza, the four hearts, or both? What about that squiggle? What's that stand for? Nothing. How about the hill in the sun? Is this meant to be FNAF 6's graveyard hill, so maybe we're counting gravestones? Or is this more likely counting the number of rays coming off the sun? Overall, converting the post-its hmm. to numbers wasn't really given the cleanest solutions, but it did feel like a step in the right direction. From there, when you look up how to solve 3x3 three three ciphers, the number one solution that pops up is the hill cipher. Now when it comes to codes, a hill cipher is pretty darn complex, but overall the key to deciphering 
missing one is a matrix, a table of numbers. And if you're using the English alphabet with its 26 letters, you're gonna need yourself a three by three matrix. Or let's just say a three by three grid of post-it notes. The numbers in the matrix represent the shifts that you're gonna have to apply to each letter of the alphabet. To encode a message using a hill cipher, you first convert the message into numbers. You can do this by assigning each letter of the alphabet a number from zero to 25. For instance, A would be zero, B would be one, and so on. Next, you multiply each letter of the message by the corresponding matrix. For example, if the first letter of your message is A, you would multiply it by the first row of the matrix. If the second letter of the message is B, you would multiply it by the second row of the matrix. The result is a new number, which you can then convert back into a letter, giving you the encoded message. To decode, you just do the same in reverse. For instance, if I had this message, hello, how are you? With this matrix, 3211102201, my encoded message would look a little something like this. Not even gonna try. Oh. Like I said, it's a pretty complex way of encoding something, but let's Great. ask ourselves when has FNAF ever not been complex? And after the wall code from Security Breach got broken in a day, Steel Wool was probably looking for something that's a bit harder, something with a mm -hmm. bit more lasting power. So, really, a hill cipher seems to fit this new wall code nicely. There's just one problem. What exactly are we decoding? Sure, we have know. ourselves a rough matrix, but where's the number or letter sequence that we're trying to put through? I don't know if those pictures now, specifically would be of my own part of the code. Maybe. Maybe they could be, but for footprints, for hearts, etc., etc. But ultimately, I wound up with nothing to show for the whole thing. Again, it felt like we were getting close to a methodology, but I was just missing some crucial step in the process. So I tried a completely different approach. Rather than ciphers, did this collection of images mean something to me? The candy to me looked very similar to the drawings that we yeah, saw. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about too. From security breach. Same goes with the pizzas. The lightning bolts are designed similarly like the to glam the glam rocks stations found throughout the pizza plex, as well or as that, the bolt yeah. of lightning on Glam mm -hmm. Rock Freddy's chest. Notice yeah. the flash at tops on the lightning bolts, which makes them distinctly different from other lightning bolts that we've seen across the series, like the controlled shock button from Sister Location. The microphone in stars reminds me of Freddy and the gang. This group of seven dots, certainly oh. vague, but the number seven has shown up before in both FNAF VR and the post-it room of Security Breach. Usually it represents the seven victims, five missing children, Charlie, and the crying child. Seven dots, seven graves. You've got the hill in the sun, which is They might just the be graves. <laughs> and Princess Quest endings, and the butters were obvious references to Sister locations exotic butter yeah <laughs> Exotic. Overall, all the post-its seem to relate in at least a small tangential way to Michael Afton. Man, he really is becoming like his dad. Always coming back to our theories. Reddit user Pikmin King X posted about these nine drawings and drew all of them back to two very important games, Sister Location and Pizzeria Simulator. Two games where we for sure play as Michael Afton. First yeah, I thought I saw the Midnight Motorist thing. Yeah, I, I was thinking that too. All over the place. In advertisements from Lally's Lollies, gumball machines we can buy for the franchise, but the most important one of all, of course, Candy, is Candy Cadet. Cadet, who actually winds up back in Ruin. The lightning bolts also relate back to FNAF 6, as they're identical to the power-up that you collect in the Fruity Maze right. minigame. Or, like I said, they can relate to the lightning bolt on Glamrock Freddy's chest, an animatronic who many have theorized, myself included, has the soul of Michael Afton. I don't think so, the but I mean it could. call back to the four main rock star animatronics, Freddy, who holds the microphone, along with Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. The Sunny Hill, well, that's the iconic FNAF 6 grave stone ending, with all five of the missing children plus Charlie put to rest on the hill. Along with that, he'd be familiar with the seventh victim, his younger brother, the crying child, so if that's what these seven dots represent, he'd understand that symbolism. Mike also has a strong love of pizza, as in the security logbook. Yeah, <laughs> free pizza. The only reason to apply for the job, with hearts on the other pages that look similar to the ones that are on the post-its over here. Then there's the footprints. In true classic FNAF theory fashion, Pikmin King X points out that these are three toed footprints, and they're all almost identical to the ones that we see in the other FNAF 6 minigame, Midnight Motorist, where there are two three-toed footprints mm -hmm. outside of a broken window, where Michael's either the escapee who broke out of that window or the one sitting on the couch watching TV. The only thing unaccounted yeah. for here are the squiggly lines, but to me, that could just represent Ennard, or the Tangle, or whatever robot spaghetti this franchise wants to throw at the wall at this point. Could this mean that Michael might in fact be alive? That he's living inside the Pizza Plex trying to finish the job that he started? Maybe that's the I've always thought the that. Location room exists in the pizza plex in the first place. Maybe it's him talking Not about the always, recreation but... of his younger brother. Maybe he learned the language of the mimic that his father used to communicate with the monster that killed his sister, like we predicted in a previous theory. All signs here point to Michael, or not. Let me be perfectly clear. This is broad speculation based on a piece of evidence that has clearly not been solved yet. And yeah, I've always thought, uh, not always, but I've thought for a while that M Michael could be alive, but I'm not really sure if this is what 
ties into that. It might, but that's not really the way that I saw it. Honestly, that's why I need that, I, that I've been seeing it as I watch this video. <laughs> all the ciphers and interpretations that I've tried here, we're still none the wiser. There are solutions out there for all of these puzzles. I am almost sure of that. But I need the collective hive mind of the FNAF community behind me to pitch out some solutions. The theorists of Reddit I called out today have done an amazing job getting the ball rolling. And I do truly believe that with a bit more time and a bit more focus, together we can solve these mysteries. Last time I did a theory like this, it was five years ago. But 48 hours later, you all had collected discover the name Cassidy hidden inside the security logbook. And now it is one of the most solid, concrete, important pieces of information that we've ever had for the lore of this franchise. Yeah. So let's try to do that again here. One or all of these puzzles are going to lead to some sort of massive revelation. So I'm leaving a link down below to the Game Theory subreddit where I'd encourage you to write up your theories. I'm also dropping in some links to decoding websites that'll help make the grind a bit easier, especially for all those grid-based puzzles. I'm going to be keeping a close eye on all of this for the next couple of weeks. It'd be cool if we could manage to solve one of these things before the year's end. Who knows? Maybe help wanted to will drop and solve everything for us, hmm. leaving the lore crystal clear with no further questions and no ciphers required. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. I'm sure <laughs> that's absolutely gonna happen with this franchise. Until that day comes, hmm. friends, remember, it's all just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. All right, well, I've had a little bit less to say in, the, in this video than I usually do for these theories, but that's just because just this is, like, more, specul more speculative and, like, asking questions rather than, whoops, rather than trying to present possible answers. I think the questions are definitely interesting. I might look into them myself when I'm not dying um, and <laughs> after I, like, do schoolwork and stuff. I don't know. Uh, I might look into it, but if not, then I'll, I'll obviously stay tuned for, like, whenever his next FNAF theory comes out, and I'll try to see if there's, um, like, if he solves it, or if somebody else solves it, or whatever. So, uh, yeah, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think of these, uh, ideas that he's been having, and let me know what you think they could possibly mean, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys!